Welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, January 29th, 2023. I do not own the rights to this music. This is Sunday School for ages 25 and older and ages 18 to 24. Today's topic is Stand Firm. Please have pen and paper ready to write down today's notable scriptures, to answer today's questions, and to write down the daily home Bible readings for the week. Our Bible basis is coming out of Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. The Bible truth, our relationship with Christ now prepares us for living with him in eternity. The memory verse, nevertheless, Whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. And that's Philippians chapter 3, verse 16. The lesson aim. By the end of the lesson, we will become familiar with what Paul says about living as it relates to eternity with Jesus Christ. Appreciate that the journey of Christian living and a quest for something eternal are demanding experiences and pledge to stand firm in Jesus Christ. Our lesson overview. Life need for today's lesson. To remember that the journey of Christian living and a quest for something eternal are demanding experiences. The Bible learning. The Lord has called us and we must stay motivated to keep on running the race. The Bible application to appreciate the journey of Christian living. Students' responses. Students will plan to stand firm in Jesus Christ. Our lesson scripture. I will read the King James Version first and then the Amplified Version of Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 16. Not as though I had already attained either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. The Amplified Version Not that I have already attained, it, this goal of being Christ-like, or have already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature, pursuing spiritual perfection should have this attitude. And if in any respect, you have a different attitude, that to God will make clear to you. Only let us stay true to what we have already attained. The biblical definitions for today's lesson are attained and press. Attained, took hold of or received, such as having received a prize. Press means to pursue, follow after, or press forward, work hard, do one's best. Light on the word. All of us have different salvation stories. We can tell how God was reaching out to us. And if we could see things from God's perspective, we would probably realize 
that he was calling out to us at many times and in many ways before we received him as our Savior. Before Paul was reaching out to grasp the prize, Jesus reached out to him and grasped him on the road to Damascus. The Lord has grasped each of us for different tasks. We have different things to do at different times of our lives, but we don't want to fail to do those things that the Lord has called us to do. It's a race. Will we reach the goal that he has set for us? The introduction says, the race is on. To the Greeks of Paul's day, races were very important. After all, this was the culture that had invented the Olympics. Beforehand, the runner spent much time in physical fitness training. A race in those days was in a straight line. The runner followed the line and raced toward the tape. At the conclusion of the race, the herald proclaimed the winner, and the winner stepped forward to receive the prize, a palm branch and perhaps some money. The race was not just a game to the Greeks. Only one man could win the race. In Christ, however, there will be many winners, and hopefully we will be in that crowd. Lesson point one. Paul's continued press. Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14 of our lesson text in review. After warning them about placing confidence in the self, Paul proceeded to warn the Philippians about the dangers of false perfectionism. Although Paul strived with all that he had to attain this righteousness, he made no claim to having already achieved it. He emphatically rejected any claim to perfection. He knew from personal experience the dangers of legalism and its tendency to produce a false sense of righteousness. Pressing toward the goal, verses 12 through 14 of our lesson text in review. Paul makes it clear that the attainment of the resurrection is in the future, something he sets his eyes on but has not achieved yet. It tends to expel the notion that the resurrection of all believers is only spiritual, completely achieved the moment one receives Christ as Lord. It also goes on to confirm that realization of the resurrection is not what we assume we own, irrespective of the life we live. Rather, the attainment of the resurrection is something to be maintained and to strive for after receiving Christ. Paul definitely must have hid this in mind when he urged the church to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Notable Scriptures Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 12 through 14 Hebrews chapter 10 verses 26 to 37 and 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 20 through 22 Paul says that he has not yet attained that is laid hold of taken or received a prize the prize is the resurrection from the dead that is still to come he has not yet reached his goal, neither is he already perfect. The word perfect is translated to mean fulfill and finish. Notable scriptures, Luke chapter 2 verse 43, John chapter 19 verse 28, John chapter 4 verse 34, John chapter 5 verse 36, and Acts chapter 20 verse 24. It has the idea of completing a given task from the loss. Paul's encounter with the living Christ on the Damascus road altered his perspective and mindset in life. He reassessed his priorities in considering access to all the worldly glory and position 
while being ignorant in the riches of knowing Christ on one hand and knowing Christ as Lord, then gaining eternal life on the other hand. It has been suggested that in Philippi, there were those who thought they had reached the goal of Christian perfection. Therefore, Paul wants to let them know that he neither thinks of himself as having arrived, reached this goal, nor does he see himself as perfect, sinless, or holy. This does not imply that Paul was lacking in spiritual experience, that he was deficient morally, or still cleaved to his old nature, but it is another demonstration of his humility, whereby he acknowledges that in all his life, God's grace is still working. It means also that the task is not yet complete. The race is not over yet. There is still a course to finish to reach the set goal. Hence, he says, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. To follow after means to run swiftly to catch a person or thing. It is also translated to press on, figuratively used of one that runs swiftly in a race, as in the Olympics, in order to reach the goal and win a prize. There is a definite sense of urgency and eagerness and effort exerted here. Why is he pressing so hard? He does it so that I may apprehend or to obtain, attain, lay hold of that for which also Christ Jesus apprehended him. This has the sense of being seized or taking possession of. Paul does not consider his past achievements to be sufficient. He cannot rest on past accomplishments. The race is unfinished. He must continue to strive to fulfill the call of God that is given through Christ Jesus. Paul's goal is to attain the objective that Christ has set for him. There is a danger in looking back. A runner would surely slow down and probably trip and lose the race. If we keep on looking back at the things we have accomplished, we will slow down as we admire what we have done. Some people look back and worry about the things they did and the things they didn't do. Surely, Paul could have done that. There were Christians who had suffered greatly because of him before he came to Christ. And some of us are always trying to guess whether we have done things wrong. And the worry can surely trip us up. The antidote for that is remembering that worry is the opposite of trust. Paul gives the answer in verse 13. We need to stop looking backward and just keep our eyes ahead, looking toward Jesus, who is waiting for us at the finish line. For Paul, the reward or prize is priceless and imperishable. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus, the upward call of life with Christ. Notable scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. In Christ means that Jesus is the sphere through which the invaluable prize is appropriated. Notable scripture, Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. There are differences between earthly and heavenly races. In the earthly race, the prize is perishable. In the heavenly race, the prize is imperishable. In the earthly race, only one person wins the first prize. Notable scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. In the heavenly race, everyone who loves the appearing of Christ is a winner. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. On earth, the fastest runner wins, while in heaven, whoever remains on the course, in spite of the time one starts or ends, or the pace one runs, wins. Because Christ grasped or took hold of Paul, he in turn wanted to grab hold of the perfection 
which is Christ's goal for him. Conversion itself represents the beginning, not the completion of the goal. Salvation has both the beginning and a desired end, but it is a process and a lifetime achievement. Question one, who or what does Paul claim to follow after and apprehend? Make sure to write down your answers. Light on the word. Perfection is the goal. Though unattained, perfection is Paul's goal. Admittedly, it is an ambition that one never seems to be able to grasp. Still, Paul is willing to continue to press toward the goal. He has begun the race and is committed to finishing the, the course. The work he has done so far has been good, but it is not over. As determined as Paul is to finish, he has not yet completed the race. Therefore, he cannot afford to be slack in his efforts. In the meantime, he is concerned with avoiding the illusion of having actually gotten there. Lesson point two, evidence of maturity. Philippians chapter three, verses 15 and 16 in review. The King James translation of the word perfect appears to be a direct contradiction to Paul's insistence that he is not perfect. What Paul meant there, what Paul meant here was the evidence of maturity, willingness to admit shortcomings, openness to correction, and willingness to be recreated in Christ Jesus. Those who possess this attitude are those who hold true to what they have attained. The Philippians were admonished to remain true to the point of view so that they could make further progress. They must neither forget the goal nor suffer under the illusion that they have already attained it, just as there was a danger in assuming perfection had been reached. Paul was well aware and equally concerned about those he treated, those about those who treated the goal with total disregard. Putting commitment to the goal into practice, verses 15 through 16 of our lesson text in review. Using the first person plural and including himself, Paul calls on every believer to do likewise, to think in the same terms with the same spiritual ambition and goal. He longs for them to also strive earnestly and be consistent to the end in order to attain the same prize. Let us therefore, is language of appeal, and Paul, including himself, shows again the spirit of humility that pervades this book in which he exemplifies throughout. He puts himself in the same level with the Philippians as his brethren, and now as those who are perfect, not in sinlessness or complete in ethical goodness. Rather, it is perfect. Rather, it is perfect as in nature or full grown in the knowledge of Christ, not as children, but as those who have been thoroughly instructed and experienced in the ways of Christ. Notable scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. Paul urges them to be thus minded, to set their minds on the same things as he does. Imitate his example regarding the things that are behind and stretch forward to pursue the mark for the prize. He then commits them to divine revelation and re instruction. He says, if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. That means if any of you are in doubt of anything, are uncertain of your understanding of Christianity, or still have doubts about the Jewish ordinances, 
God will reveal the truth to you. Reveal here means to take off the cover or disclose what before was unknown. In verse 16, translated, nevertheless here, which also means besides, moreover, or in any case, is used as a break in the sentence. To emphasize an important truth, here, Paul urges them, including himself, to let their conduct be consistent with the level of understanding they have attained. Whatever level we are, in verse 16, Paul says, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Stressing the importance of harmony and mutual cooperation in spite of individual opinions on things. The phrase, let us walk, means to march in a row or in orderly ranks, as in the military, or to keep in line. That means to conform to the standards or laid down principles which God has established. Question two, what does Paul encourage the Philippians to do? Make sure to write down your answers. Our Bible application, live to please the Lord. Some people start off their Christian walk with great enthusiasm, but they soon tire and maybe move on to something else. Paul wanted to encourage the Philippians to please our Lord in their daily lives and stay in the race. Students' responses. The picture that this scripture paints of Paul is that he is grasping with all his might. Today, we want to make it easy to follow Jesus. We want Jesus to drop all the material blessings into our laps. We certainly don't want to suffer for him. Is this the picture we see of Paul in these verses or anywhere else in scripture? People in other places are suffering for Jesus, but we don't always take this as seriously as we should. How can we turn around our lazy and indifferent attitudes toward our faith in Jesus Christ? Write down on a piece of paper the things you need to do to commit your life completely to Jesus. As a reminder, post it on your refrigerator or your mirror in your bedroom. Dear Father, thank you for grace to run this race called life and for your mercy when we fall short, as we continue to press toward the mark of the high call of God. Infill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can rightly discern what your will is for our lives. As we look to you, enable us to endure hardship and to live a life that pleases you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our daily home Bible readings. Monday, the topic is Be Watchful. Read Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. Tuesday, the topic is Be Prepared. Read Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Wednesday, the topic is Be Trustworthy. Read Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 21. Thursday, the topic is be compassionate. Read Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 40. Friday, the topic is be holy. Read Ma read 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 through 21. Saturday, the topic is stand firm. Read Philippians chapter 3 beginning at verse 14 and ending at chapter 4 verse 1. Sunday, the topic is hold fast. Read Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. The end, and God bless you. Thank you for joining me today.